Hell's Planitia is one of the largest craters in the solar system, but it is actually the second largest confirmed crater on Mars. That is if you consider Utopia Planitia to be a crater. Utopia Planitia is about 3000 kilometers in diameter, and although the terrain around Utopia Planitia suggests that it very likely is a crater, it's not as obvious as with Hellas Planitia. So Hellas Planitia is the largest unambiguous crater on Mars. It is about 2300 kilometers in diameter, which is a bit more than halfway through the mainland United States. And the surface area of Hellas Planitia is about 4 million kilometers square. So it has about 45% the land surface area of the United States. This giant crater is located at the southern latitude of Mars, right in the middle between the equator and the South Pole. Now Hell's Planitia doesn't look like a regular crater, since its edges are not overly pronounced. And that's because it is around 4 billion years old. Mars itself is around 4.5 billion years old. So its edges got a bit smoother over billions of years. Hell's Planitia is also around 7 kilometers deep overall. We know that because NASA determined zero meters of elevation on Mars precisely and used that for their topographic maps. In the past, before 2001, NASA used an average atmospheric pressure of 610 pascals to define zero meters on Mars. Now they use the gravitational plus rotational potential of Mars to create an equipotential surface and therefore zero meters. So on Mars, the deepest and the tallest point is understood through the reference point of the datum, the equipotential surface which was already precisely defined by NASA. Just like the deepest and the lowest point on Earth is understood through the sea level, which is Earth's zero meters. So now we know that the deepest point on Mars is in the Hellas Planitia crater, which is overall pretty deep at 7 kilometers, but there is a spot at the western side of the crater that is at a depth of around 8 kilometers, so it is almost as deep as Mount Everest is tall on Earth. Now at that 8 kilometer deep spot, and in Hellas Planitia in general, the depth is so great that the atmospheric pressure is double what it is generally on Mars. In Hellas Planitia, it is about 1200 pascals, which is about 1% the pressure of the average pressure on Earth. Now the average pressure on Mars overall is 610 pascals, which is 0.5% the average pressure on Earth. So the reason that the pressure in Hellas Planitia is two times greater compared to the rest of the surface on average is simply because when it is that deep, air stacks up and weighs down more heavily. And as there is less stacking up of air, the less of it weighs down, so the pressure decreases. So for example, on Olympus Mons, on Mars, which is the tallest planetary mountain in the solar system, at a height of 22 kilometers above zero meters, the pressure is at 72 pascals. So Hellas Planitia has a pressure 16 times greater compared to the top of Olympus Mons. Since the top of Olympus Mons is at 22 kilometers, and the deepest point on Hellas Planitia is at a depth of about 8 kilometers, the difference between the tallest and the lowest point on Mars is about 30 kilometers. On Earth, Mount Everest has the tallest point, at 8.8 .8 kilometers above the sea level, and Mariana Trench has the deepest point at 11 kilometers below the sea level. So the difference between the lowest and the highest point on Earth is about 20 kilometers, 10 kilometers less compared to the Mars's 30 kilometer difference. Now Hellas Planitia not only is pretty deep, but also has all sorts of peculiar terrain features, which are generally hard to observe, as according to NASA, there are frequently clouds and dust storms. This image right here, for example, is capturing a dust storm event in Hellas Planitia. Still, there are quite a lot of images of the bizarre features of this giant crater. Plenty of good ones that I'll be showing here come from the high resolution camera attached to the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that arrived on Mars 
in 2006. This massive orbiter that weighs about 1 to 2 tons and dwarfs humans in terms of size is still operating 16 years later. By the end of 2010, this orbiter had a cost of around 700 million dollars, but the amount of amazing images that we got out of it so far and the fact that it is still used to relay data for ground missions on Mars makes it well worth it. So let's start from the western side of the crater, where these streamlines and ridges are located at, at the deepest part of the crater. And they all look like they are flowing in a certain direction, and relatively abruptly the streamlines stop and another differently patterned terrain appears. That seems to be a trend with Hellas Planitia, where all sorts of different patterns are scattered in quite a pronounced way, and they stop in a pronounced way. For example, this is also at the deepest part of Hell's Planitia, at the western side. And what can be seen here is these clear ridges and valleys sort of flowing and then that pattern abruptly stops and it is surrounded by a much more even but a still rugged terrain. This image right here is at the impact crater called Badwater, inside of the deepest part of Hell's Planitia. And this is one of, if not the deepest points on Mars, right here. The image from this site is not that good, but it can still be understood from this image that there are some sort of spiderweb patterns occurring here, and there are some sand ripples as well, and the various brightness levels give away that it's relatively colorful. This image right here is capturing the western side of the crater during fall. Clearly there is this surreal pattern occurring here that nearly looks like an optical illusion. It is thought that this pattern formed due to wind erosion. Carbon dioxide frost also appears in this region during fall. Of course not enough of it is here to form a cap like on the South Pole since it's hotter here, but it is cold enough so that the slopes here which cause a cold retention get covered in CO2 frost. Now this image here was captured near the center of Hellas Planitia. Clearly these lines, squiggles, appear to be going downwards from a dune slope. It is thought that these squiggles form when dry ice, carbon dioxide ice blocks, break apart and roll down the dune slope. Now looking at the southern part of Hellas Planitia, we can clearly see that there are many of these flow channels occurring here, all coming down from a more elevated region, and they are all heading in a direction towards the depths of the Hellas Planitia crater. These are likely marks from the lava that erupted nearby from these volcanoes. The lava flowed for hundreds of kilometers downwards. And compared to the rest of the crater, the rim of the crater here is not pronounced at all. In fact, the transition between the crater and the upper region here is quite smooth. The volcanoes erupting quite possibly caused that. Then going all the way to the northern side of the crater, let's take a look at how the rim of the crater looks like here. And this is it. As clearly visible, things are chaotic here. There are all sorts of layered ridges and patterns here that have very different brightness levels. Some of the brighter parts here are explained away by either water or lava drying up. And overall, this part of the rim shows relatively intense wind activity, and that causes the huge amount of ripples that can be seen here. Now let's take a look at the inside of the crater Turby also at the northern rim of Hellas Planitia. So a large impact occurred right at the rim of Hellas Planitia, and the impact created a 160 kilometer long crater. The inside of this Turby crater has this bizarre formation, a ridge that has a huge amount of layers. The way that this formed is still a mystery. Some speculations involve the water causing the formation of those layers. Now, going towards the eastern side of the crater, there is this sort of honeycomb pattern that occurs here. It also occurs in other parts of Hellas Planitia. It's largely still a mystery as to how these silt patterns form. Then going even further towards the eastern side of Hellas Planitia, and what can be seen clearly is these valleys, and of which two most pronounced ones are Dao and Harmakis Valleys which are both about a few kilometers deep and are about a few tens of kilometers wide at best. 
they also are both around 700 kilometers long. Now we can also see that right beside these valleys, at a much greater elevation, is a volcano called Hadriacus Mons, which shows clearly many flow channels all heading in a direction downwards towards where the two big valleys are. Some speculations based on the indications of the terrain then say that the channels formed when, as the lava flowed downwards from the erupted volcano, it heated up the underground ice, which caused it to turn liquid quickly, which then caused a massive sudden flooding of water. And as it flowed out, it carved out the massive channels that we are seeing today. Another thing that is interesting about this crater is that NASA found hidden glaciers in Hellas Planitia with the radar of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. But the glaciers are inside of three craters and they are covered by the Martian soil, which also provides insulation. So that is the general overview of Hellas Planitia, the deepest spot on Mars. Now just maybe there are some caves on Mars that reach even a lot more below 8 kilometers. But so far we know that Hellas Planitia is the deepest spot on Mars. And I didn't even cover everything about it, since there is just a vast amount of different terrain features that it has. And Hellas Planitia is quite good for studying because of that. Some of these features could provide big clues as to what most likely happened in the past on Mars, and how it all led to the point at which Mars is right now. So Hellas Planitia would probably make for a very interesting site to send a rover to. That would probably give quite a lot of good insights. <laughs>